Hello and uh, welcome to this next video on uh, mobile repairing. In this video, we will try and understand some of the key components that are placed on the PCB of a mobile phone. These are typically called the chip components of a mobile phone. These chip components are a very critical and essential part of a mobile PCB and are very, very important for the functioning of the mobile phone. Now, in order to understand these components, we will try and take the help of a larger circuit board of a television. In the larger circuit board of a television, which is kept right behind the mobile PCBs, we will be able to see these components very clearly. And then using those components, we will try and understand where these components are placed on the mobile phone and what is the role of each of these components in the functioning of a mobile phone. So let's get started in trying to understand what these components are. One of the most common components comp that is usually seen in a mobile board or any electronic component um, circuit board is called a resistor. Resistor is a very critical component and creates resistance in the electric flow of any circuit. So let's try and see how the resistor looks like on a TV circuit board and then come back to the mobile board to understand how we can identify these resistors. Now in the TV board, you will be able to see those white color components with some colored lines on top. These are the resistors. And in a PCB, you will find many of these resistors with different color codes and different colors painted on them. Now, each of these component functions as a resistor. A resistor essentially creates a resistance in the electric flow. And the resistance is indicated by the color coding on each of these resistors. There is a standard chart which can be used to understand what is the resistance value for each of these resistors. Resistance value is typically calculated or signified in units of ohms. Primarily, resistance creates a resistance or restriction to the flow of electric current. The reason why we will need a resistor on a PCB is to ensure that we supply only the required amount of electricity or voltage to different components on a mobile phone or a, any circuit board. Each component will work efficiently only if the necessary amount of voltage or current is supplied to them. An excess supply of voltage or current can result in a damage to those electric component. And that is why we will need resistors to ensure that we are able to control the amount of current or electricity that is supplied to the respective components. So resistance, resistors are available in different values of ohms. And depending on the requirement, we can place the respective resistor on the circuit board to ensure appropriate supply of voltage or current. Now, let us move to the mobile PCB to see where the resistors are placed and how they can be identified. Now, in a mobile PCB, resistors can be identified as small black components which have two white lines on the side. These two white lines typically look like soldered lines and that is what signifies a resistor. You can see very clearly. Let me show it on another mobile PCB board and you will be able to understand it much better. Now, on these boards, you will be able to see a black color device with two white lines on the side looking like a soldering, soldered end. This is called a resistor. Resistors come in different sizes and different values. 
there are smaller sized resistors as you can see on the board and these are the smallest size resistors on the mobile PCB. So, all of these could have different values and their values or their position is determined by where they supply the electricity or which component they supply the electricity. As you can see in a mobile PCB, you will be able to see a lot of these resistors which are very clear and can be identified by their black color with two white lines on the side. Typically, when you are repairing a PCB or working on components of a mobile PCB, in order to test the uh, connectivity in the mobile PCB, you need to do tracing using the multimeter. And we have uh, learnt about how we can do a tracing using the continuity testing part on a uh, multimeter. Now, while you are doing the tracing or testing, you will be able to find out if the connectivity is disrupted at any of the component points such as at the resistor point. In that case, you will need to remove that resistor and try and replace it with a different resistor. You can either pick up a resistor from the market or you could probably use a resistor from another uh, non-working mobile phone and try and replace that and test whether the problem is solved. And in order to do that, you will need to ensure that you follow the same procedures for tracing and testing as we have done in our earlier repairing videos. So, resistance is essentially something that creates a resistance on the electric current. Let us move on to the next component which is called as a condenser or capacitor. Uh, there are different types of condensers that are used, but the there are only primarily two forms of condensers or capacitors. Now, if as you can see in this board, there are different types of condensers or capacitors that are placed on this circuit board. The first type of condenser is called a plus or minus electrolytic, electrolytic condenser. The other one is a simple condenser. In mobile phones, typically you will have a simple condenser. A simple condenser is something which does not have a positive or a negative point in it, which basically means that you can place the simple condenser in any direction that you want and it will work perfectly well. So, let us try and understand where these condensers are placed on a mobile PCB. So, if you look closely, you will be able to see those brown colored components. These brown colored components are called as condensers or capacitors. And these are simple condensers primarily because they do not have a fixed positive or negative side. You can place them in whichever direction that you want and they will work perfectly fine. As you can see, there is a clear distinction between capacitors and resistors. Resistors are in black color with white uh, side lines and capacitors are things which are in brown color and can be very clearly identified. Now, a capacitor's task is to primarily transmit the signal from one point to the other point. Many a times, this also helps in amplifying the signals from one point to the other point. Many a times, these capacitors can also help in removing unwanted signals or blocking unwanted signals from progressing in the circuits. The capacitors sometimes also function as a very short or quick time batteries which can store electricity for a very short period of time and can release it in one go when there, when there is a requirement. As an example, when you use the flash on a mobile phone, the flash is usually operated through a capacitor. So, the capacitor charges up using the battery power and when the shoot button is pressed, the capacitor discharges all of the stored electricity in one go, producing a bright flash of light and then goes back to a zero position. 
So, a capacitor essentially can function as transmission points for uh, signals or voltage from one end to the other end or one point to the other point. They also help in amplifying the current by storing the current for some time and amplifying it through a pressure. So, a capacitor could work on either the signals or could work on voltages as well. You will need to read through the circuit diagram very clearly for you to understand whether a particular capacitor is working on a signal or is working on voltage. Now that we have understood uh, resistor and uh, capacitor, let us move on to understand another important component called the transistor. Transistor in itself is a fully functioning unit on a PCB. Similar to how we use ICs on a PCB, we will also use the transistors on the circuit boards in electronics or mobile repairing. If you look at the TV board, you will be able to clearly see the transistors. Let me try and focus. The black color component that you see which has three legs in it is the transistor. All transistors will typically have three electrodes in them and each electrode has a very specific function. A transistor typically helps in amplification of signals and this amplification can also be controlled using an external input. In most cases, a transistor is primarily used to amplify or increase the signals that are passed through the amp, uh, transistor. In a mobile PCB, a transistor takes in the signals from one end and amplifies the signal to the other end or increases the signals as the signals pass through the transistor. Now, let us look at the mobile PCB and see where the transistors are placed and how we can identify them. Now, on a TV uh, circuit board, we saw that the transistor has three electrodes and similarly, on the mobile PCB, as you can see, this small component is the transistor. It has three electrodes. Now, one of the electrode is called as the base and there are two other electrodes which are called the collector and emitter. And if you see those three electrodes, two on one side and one on the other side, you can easily identify a transistor on a mobile PCB. Typically, transistors can be checked using a multimeter once you remove them from the PCB. So, for larger transistors, it is very easy to check. Similarly, for uh, mobile transistors as well, you can remove them from the board and try and test them using a multimeter. The three electrodes on a transistor essentially function as a way of uh, collecting signal and forwarding them with amplification happening in between. So, the base is where there is additional voltage that is provided into a transistor. The collector receives the incoming signals and emits it out through the emitter. The base helps in amplifying the signals through additional power that is supplied through the base point and that is typically how a transistor works. So, in this video, we try to understand three important components which are used in electronic devices or circuits and even on mobile phones. The first one is the resistor which creates a resistance on the flow of electricity. The second one is the capacitor which forwards the signals in the uh, mobile PCB and purifies those signals. And the third one is a transistor which essentially amplifies the signals that are sent into a transistor.
As we go ahead, we will try and understand a few more components which are at the chip level of a mobile PCB and we will also try and understand how we can identify faults or repair faults across uh, these mobile PCBs in the future videos. Thank you very much.